A sacred rose is born out of a thorned extension. This symbolizes an earthly expression of the pearl. The pearl starts as grit within an oyster, where the rose is born from the thorns. It is only when the oyster stops resisting the grit does it become one with it, allowing the pearl chrysalis to occur. Thorns on a rose symbolize the grit of an oyster. The oyster represents the ark vessel, a physical container for spirit. The pearl itself symbolizes the Christ seed held within your eighth chakra, known today as your higher heart, meaning that of your higher expression. The stem of a rose extends and grows as one with thorns until it reaches its height and creates a bud. As the trinity of the stem, thorns, and bud unifies, it allows the expansion to take place, creating petals upon petals. This is also seen spiritually as your own spiritual tree of life. The petals expanding symbolize the leaves upon the branches, which are the expressions of your spirit. The stem symbolizes a branch upon your tree of life. Upon each petal, each leaf, blueprints for your soul's expression upon a timeline is kept. One can see the mere representation of the life cycle upon the petals and leaves. For each fall season, they descend into the earth, and each spring, they are born anew. An onlooker of the rose may see each part of it as a separate component, meaning that of stem, thorn, and petal. But the rose feels itself as an expression of creation, operating as a unity consciousness within the earthly garden. Positioned around the human spinal column is a tube of light known today as chakras. This tube of light can be seen as the stem of the rose. Each thorn symbolizes illusional barriers the ego has placed upon it. Although created with the intention to simply protect the human's actions. As the human accepts these thorns as simply a unified extension of itself, it then allows a rose to bloom at each of the chakra centers. Positioned at each chakra four-way cross-section, the energy center traverses a rose initiation. The original and organic rose upon earth still seen in some wild roses today, is seen with seven leaflets upon its stem and five petals. The current depiction of a rose today is simply a genetically modified version that humans started around 200 years ago. The rose itself is a gift from the pearl garden of the highest heaven. It is in this garden that the Adam come on, which is the primordial man, was created Therefore, we planted them upon the earthly garden as a reflection of your highest material expression. The seven leaflets symbolize the seven lower chakras of man needed to illuminate and bloom for a rose initiation to be completed. It is at this stage that the eighth chakra, the higher heart, is activated. When this is activated, it allows each crystalline petal to blossom in a cup fashion for receiving light of spirit. This is seen as the crescent, the crown above the head to receive the light of your spirit. The five petals of a rose symbolizes those five upper chakras that can only be accessed upon completion of this initiation. The four upper chakras are seen as white roses, and the seven lower chakras are seen as red roses. The eighth chakra is seen as a pink rose because it is where the two streams meet, that of the upper beautiful diamond white angelic blood and that of the lower red human blood. This meeting zone is seen etherically as a cross section of an infinity loop meaning that meeting place, the center part of the figure eight. This chakra has 12 petals because it is fed with the energies of all the upper six and the lower six combined, being that mirrored reflection of above and below, within and without. 
The rose is a symbol for beauty and love because that is what existence is. That is who you are. You are love. Love is not obtained by ways of the physical senses nor found without you because its world is that of the spiritual. Love simply is and love is life. Love is the constant flow of eternity that forms the womb of divine mother. God's divine will is to anchor altruism within the earthly garden and allow this energy current to flow through all beings without meeting resistance. The Christ seed of divine father implanted within eternity to form the eternal heavenly rose. The current of love is what it needs to grow. The diamond sparkles of love emit as raindrops to nourish it and aid in its birthing. As this seed grows, it becomes a beautiful rose. It extends itself upwards towards the light and prepares to receive the rays of its maker. Before one can ascend and unify itself with the pearlescent white light of spirit, it first must grow roots deep in the earth. Once it traverses this path, it can start to rise above the surface and towards the light. The rose mystica was created before man fell from grace, for its origins are in the Pearl Garden. The Melchizedek Order is an order of elect and illuminated beings that traverse the earthly garden with the mission to help expand the consciousness of the man race. When this order first came to the spear, they did so by way of the spear of Venus. However, they originate from higher planes of existence that do not reside within this universal spectrum. The Melchizedek Order brings the in-depth teachings of this to all masters of light upon the earthly garden. This is then taught by these masters in sacred temples. While there are many names and sects of these teachings, the pathway of the rose was most recently openly taught, and it is what is deep in your subconscious memories. These temples started to become mystery schools and hidden by frequency at the end times of antiquity. When all the temples were being destroyed and the oracles and priestesses were hunted, they only reside now within the hidden sacred realms of inner earth. Statues, manuscripts, ancient relics, and paintings of the most popular deity associated with the rose, known as Goddess Venus, also Aphrodite, denote her emitting from a seashell. This originally denoted the birthing of your eighth chakra out of the underworld, which is symbolized by the ocean. The ocean is seen as the depths and density of worlds below the higher realms, where above the ocean symbolizes air, that initiation of spirit. The pearl is another one of her symbols to denote the pearl code activation. Sometimes this goddess will come to an initiate in dreams or visions, emitting from a seashell holding a pearl. This is simply her inviting you to go within your heart, to dive deep within the depths of yourself, deep within the ocean, to discover the sacred treasures that are hidden in the darkness. Another symbol of Venus is her girdle. This is a mirrored spiraled symbol which can resemble the horns of a ram. They are joined together because this signifies the eighth chakra. This symbolizes that infinity loop where your upper and lower chakras meet. The bee is another one of her symbols to denote how the sacred pollen of light emits from you after this is activated and allows you to transfer this pollen to others within the earthly garden. Love is present during this time because when one holds the vibration of love in their field, they automatically transmute all lower vibrations that try to encounter them. All lower vibrations that do not serve them now are transmuted from their field of light. This is the vibration of the Christos honey, which is existence in the purest form. In ancient days, we taught these teachings and ways of stories. The legends told of Venus to woo a lover does not mean to cast a spell upon them. It was meant in the context that the aura of this being was of such pure vibrations that it made all shadows dissolve of the other individual 
allowing the person to feel this love, to feel that spark within them and dissolve all mask. That same feeling that you feel when you're in the presence of an angel or a master of light. It is only when a person dissolves all their mask and burns away their barriers of defense that love can rise within them. Love is like a flame set to your heart spark. The heart spark is the first thing that appears in an embryo, and it is the last to exit the body upon a physical death. The spark of light within you is the pearl seated within your heart. It is in these moments that you can truly see who you are. This is why the mirror is another one of her symbols, a symbol once taught in the Rose Initiation. We would instruct initiates to look into their eyes for a period and truly connect deep within themselves. Today, we instruct this for you to understand your beauty, The beauty is inside you, not without you. When an initiate is being called by spirit to activate its heart portal, they will be visited by either a swan or swan goddess. Sometimes a swan will appear in a vision resting on a lake of glowing water and then gently shifting into a beautiful goddess. This goddess typically will offer a sacred gift to you at this time. This gift can be a sword, flower, scepter, pearl, or anything that represents something sacred to your soul in relation to your destiny. Deep within the inner earth sanctum is a well of wisdom. From it, all codes flow into the waterways of the surface where they meet for their dance with keepers of the sky. It is from this sanctum that mermaids, dolphins, and even swans will carry these codes to those who reside upon the surface. Held within these codes can be messages, wisdom, activations, or even memories. And for where few, it could be a guide to come and take you into the sanctum for a sacred ceremony. In the image of Aphrodite on a swan, you can see from her fingers emit the girdle, that double spiral. This is a daintier expression of the labyrinth spiral symbols used in the sacred temples. The labyrinth spiral was the symbol of the priestess oracles who taught the rose initiations in the times of Lemuria and even in some ancient Atlantis temples. They were known as white swans, and later sects of the sanctum would morph into swans. These are now echoed from the legends of Avalon. Their symbols include a bee, an oak tree, and even a blue sapphire. Those of you who were once of the priestess oracles are visited by these aspects of yourself in dreams and visions to help awaken who you truly are and what you are destined to become again. This is why you feel such a deep, instant connection with them when they appear to you, because it simply is you. The swan symbolizes purity, meaning that of the body, mind, and soul. The swan floating on top of the water symbolizes those who have risen above the earthly desires and traditions of the underworld, which is the ocean. They have now ascended the dark depths of the ocean and are ready to fly as one with spirit. This goddess that appears to you may also present to you an apple. The apple is connected to your own tree of life and is gifted to you as an initiation to come into the dark forest where the well of wisdom is hidden. Legends speak of a well of wisdom hidden in a dark forest sought after by many wise men, magicians, and kings. They would come seeking knowledge by drinking from it, however, only to use it for their own gain and power instead of using this wisdom to inspire others. It is due to these actions that the well of wisdom is hidden deep beyond the veils of time. It is within the dark forest that you will come to cross points of choosing to honor spirit or to follow the path of the collective. Walking the path of spiritual enlightenment is very lonely because it forces you to go inward, to venture into your own dark forest. As you venture deeper within you, will meet the darkest of your thoughts and suppressed emotions, which simply are veils themselves, designed to distort the very visions that you receive from spirit. In that moment, you realize that you are partly blinded by this. You may even hesitate, even though you feel so connected to spirit. You have to keep pushing past this darkness alone to become a hero in your own spiritual journey. 
What distinguishes a leader from a follower is those who strive forward, focus on the goal, and those who hold doubt. Those with grit continue to strive forward no matter how many times they fall. Those with hesitation and doubt will always exist within the comforts of what is already known. Only a true hero can transform pain into passion, the very passion needed to conquer the unknown lands of oneself. Transform the seed in your heart into a stem, which is a channel of light to your spirit. Use your grit to push past the earth's surface. Gain your wings, fly, and become a beautiful rose. Thank you.